What's it like to have the prospect of prison hanging over you? I think that I like to believe that this is a test from God. I like to believe that if you become the most Googled man in the world for saying that you have mental resilience, that God is gonna make sure you don't have that degree of fame without testing you. I like to believe that God comes along and says, yes, I've allowed you to become the top G. We're gonna see if you really are the top G. I believe that's how the world works. It's certainly intimidating, especially knowing you're completely innocent, but I believe it's a test and I believe it's my job to pass the test for my ancestors and for people watching over me and for God. And I think I have to do the absolute best I can possibly do in the scenario and the circumstance, regardless of whether I win or lose. I still believe I'm gonna win because I've seen the case file and I've seen that no laws have been broken. But even in the very unfortunate circumstance that this matrix attacks goes deep enough to throw me into a jail cell, I think I should handle it like a man. I think I should stay and finish the process and I should walk with my head held high and suffer as much as I need to suffer to stick by my convictions and know that I'm an innocent person. And I refuse to break, I refuse to cry, I refuse to be depressed about it. I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna smile regardless. And regardless of what happens to me, I want everyone to know that, one, I would never kill myself, and two, I think that as a man, there's always gonna be a degree of pain and suffering in your journey. I don't think you're ever gonna become a successful man or be good at being a man without pain and suffering. And there's many times in my life where something terrible happened to me, and at the time, if I could change it, I would have, but retrospectively, you kind of look back and go, you know what, that was formulative That's right. for me. That's right. That is what God decided I needed to become who I became. So all of the pain and all the suffering I've ever gone through in my life ended up, in the end, building me into the person I am, and I'm proud of who I am. So if God decides I need to go back to a Romanian dungeon for however many days, then all I can do is accept it and accept his plan and accept that it's going to make me a better person. And, and So you it. see the hand of God in your life? Absolutely. I think that he is the best of planners. And like I said, if you, if you retrospectively analyze all the times in life, you wish you could have changed things. Yes. He knew better. And I'm going to have to accept that. When did you conclude that? I think, I guess I always kind of knew. I was atheistic for a while when I was younger. But as you get older, you start to look at the world and understand that the thing for me was actually, I guess, a scientific principle. It was Newton's law of equal and opposite force. If there is evil in the world, and I'd like to think we both agree there certainly is, yes. there has to be an equal and opposite force, which is good. And I would like to think of that as God. Even the idea of God as a notion, even just as a concept, if that idea of God resists evil, then God is real. If you have two islands, you have two people, let's say a ship crashes, and you have two people who swim to two different islands, and one island they're atheists, savages, and they rip you apart. And the other island you get there and they believe in God and they believe they're not allowed to kill you. Even just their idea of God, God saved your life. So I think even just the concept of God in and of itself, if enough people believe in it makes them do good, then God must be true. And that's the equal and opposite force to the evil of the world. And this is how I, I view it. So I don't see how anybody with a conscience cannot believe in God anymore. That's such a profoundly different worldview from the one that we're presented with, I think. Yeah. That, do you think that's maybe the division in the West between people who, who see those forces at work and, and those who don't? I, I think the main, I think the West is actually split between people who think and people who don't think at all. I think the people, there, there are, there's no such thing as these two opposing worldviews. I think people believe there's worldview A and worldview B. I, I disagree with that. I think there's worldview A, the good guys, which are primarily people who do believe in God, do have parameters, do believe in standards, do believe in self-respect, do know how to say no. And there's worldview B, which changes day by day, regard, based on what they're told, which means they have no real worldview at all. They just repeat. And they have no standards and they have no parameters. There's nothing you can tell them that will make them wake up and go, that's wrong, because they have no inherent morality. So you can literally you could say bestiality is accepted and encouraged now. It's good for you because for climate change. And they'll sit there and go, oh, for climate change, oh, well, off we go. And uh, they'll just do it. So I think you have a, a camp of people who, who think and you have a camp of people who repeat. And I don't think there's actually the, the opposing side to the good. I don't think function as a thinking populace at all. I think they simply repeat.